Hi, this is Fiji McAlpine with Do Yoga With Me. This is day two of Elevate, a 14-day yoga challenge. Our practice today will introduce the principle of levity, which allows us to move with grace and with ease in even the most challenging moments. For your practice today, you'll need a strap and a block is optional. I hope you enjoy. The practice today will start in a seated pose. And I encourage you to really connect to the earth with your sit bones. If that means that you need to rock side to side and draw the flesh out from under them, please do that. And then rest your hands on your knees and give yourself a moment to close your eyes. When we close our eyes, it really increases our ability to connect with the sensations taking place in our body. Take a few slow and steady cycles of breath. Noticing the rhythm of your breath, the sensations caused by the inhale and the exhale. And then bring your awareness down into your seat. The sit bones in particular that are pressing down into the floor, that point of anchoring. And allow yourself to really encourage that connection with the earth to feel that point of connection as gravity draws your physical body down towards the floor. And then from that place of connection, begin to draw energy up from the earth into the frame of the body, pressing down to lift up. Notice where gravity can help you in this frame, drawing your shoulders away from your ears. And where that energy that you're sourcing from the earth can help you with extension through the spine. So your head is balancing effortlessly over the neck and the heart. Feel your collarbones dropping down away from your chin, your heart sinking and settling back into the center of your chest. As you inhale and exhale, you feel the expansion of the front, side, and back of the rib cage. In this very simple seated pose, we can discover this principle of levity, of lightness. By connecting down with the earth, we can rebound up towards the sky. We can let go of unnecessary muscular effort, which gives the entire frame a sense of ease and openness. Allow your eyes to open, but keep your gaze soft. Take your hands to the earth in front of you and create the same angle with your arms that you would have in downward dog. Press down into the heel of your hand and feel that firming pressure in your sit bones. And then again, discover your ability to create light and length through the back of your body now. Plugging your tailbone down into the earth and then extending out through the crown of your head. Maintain that lightness with every inhale. On the exhale, find little pockets of space and move with gravity towards the earth. Press into your hands, inhale to lift, inhale to lengthen, exhale to soften and move with gravity. As you practice this way, you allow gravity to become an ally, to do some of the work for you. One last round of breath, every inhale lengthening, drawing your chin slightly in, keeping your shoulders drawn back, every exhale softening. Now walk your hands back into your foundation. Bring your hands back behind you, unravel the legs, recross in the opposite fashion. Sitting tall again, pressing down into your sit bones. Bring your right hand to the floor beside you. Sweep the left hand in front of you and round your upper back a bit, exploring the sensations of that left shoulder. Draw the left thumb back behind your head and then slowly again carve out that negative space in front of you with your left arm. Do that two more times. Add the breath. Inhale, rounding around that left shoulder. Reach back. Exhale. 
One last time. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale to reach back. Press into your right hand. Exhale. The left hand draws down to the floor. Inhale. The right arm rolls in front of you, rounding the upper back and right shoulder. Exhale. Return the right hand in front of you. Allow yourself to linger in those areas that feel interesting. Inhale. Create space. Exhale. Round, soften, and move with gravity. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. In this way, your breath is massaging the shoulder. Now inhale, reach back. Press into your left hand. Exhale. Both hands travel up. Reaching into your fingertips, lengthening through the sides of your waist as you inhale. And then on your next exhale, soften the shoulders and feel how gravity can grab the shoulders and collarbones themselves and drop them down. Find more ease in this frame by pressing into your sit bones, creating that sense of length and lightness. And as you exhale, you dissolve the unnecessary muscular effort that grips the shoulders. The pose becomes more graceful and actually has more ease. Take your hands forward now. Draw yourself to your hands and your knees, unraveling the legs back behind you, coming into the frame of tabletop. Hook your ten toes under on the next inhale. Take the crown of your head and the tailbone towards the sky. As you exhale, press into your hands, float your knees, Draw your knees into the chest as you press your hips back towards your heels, rounding the back. Inhale forward, cow belly breath. Exhale back, drawing your knees in. One last cycle of breath like that, inhaling. And exhaling. With your next inhale, come forward. Establish tabletop pose and uncurl your back toes. Take your left hand now and flip the left hand over, working the left arm straight. Take your right hand and do the same. The strong sensations in the base of the wrist can feel overwhelming when we think about how heavy our body is moving down. But when we remember to lift and feel light, draw energy up away from the floor towards the sky, that sensation becomes much more manageable. You can explore it with your breath. Curl your fingers into your palm and then unravel the hands, pulsing that life force through you, lifting with every inhale, lengthening, softening with every exhale. Last cycle of breath. Inhale and exhale. Just preparing our joints for practice, flipping the hands over again, curl your toes under, one cow belly breath, inhale. And as you exhale, press back into your first downward facing dog. Take your gaze towards your toes, shake your head yes and no, releasing the muscles surrounding the neck and the tops of the shoulders. Let your elbows bend. Allow the crown of your head to yearn towards your thumbs. Squeeze the elbows in and press your arms straight. Let your knees bend, reach back with your hips. Then advocate the legs and soften the hip crease. Take a few cycles of breath here, again into the front, side and back of the rib cage. Feeling the lengthening with every inhale and the softening moving down with gravity on every exhale. With that next inhaling breath, come forward to your high plank pose. Remember that we always have the option in this pose of bringing your knees to the ground. What we're trying to do is preserve the angle of the body where our head is higher than our heart and our hips are lower. And we're not taking a deep sway in the lower back or a deep rounding in the upper back, but finding a nice smooth long line of energy. And here we really tap into that pulse of life. When we're in the present moment, we have the ability to draw energy from what is real and what is living and what is inside of us. When our mind is in the future, like some of us want to be right now, getting out of plank pose, or in the past, again, a time when we weren't in plank pose, 
we are unable to draw on that life force. But in this moment, when you meet it and you let go of that resistance, you can find it inside of you. You can press down to feel lighter and longer and stronger. You can let go of unnecessary effort and resistance. And then we know that every moment passes, so we ease ourselves down, uncurling the toes. Sliding your hands back, draw your elbows in, come up to Bhujangasana Cobra Pose. Again, pressing down to lift up. The more we anchor into the floor, the more lift that we find. With the intention of elongating our spine, softening the shoulders, the collarbones. Exhale to release. We'll do one more lift, inhale. Keep your toes pressing down and exhale. Hook your toes under. You can keep the knees on the floor or lift them with you as you press back up into high plank pose and shift back into downward dog. From your downward dog, lift your heels. Look in the direction of your hands and walk your feet in that direction, landing at the front of your mat. Very generous bend to your knees, pouring the upper body over the lower body. Knees are soft, elbows are soft, head hangs heavy. Here gravity works for our spine, reminding us of the space that exists between each and every vertebra. And with our breath, we can explore that space and the sensations. Slowly draw your fingers back in line with your toes. Keep the bend to your knees, but as you inhale, move your torso away from your thighs. Now explore how to truly lengthen through the back of your body. If we take the gaze forward, we lose the integrity of the line in our spine by pinching it off in the cervical spine. See if you can angle your gaze so that your neck lines up with the rest of your spine. And then you can surge energy both forward into your crown and back into your tailbone. Maintaining that long line of energy, slowly return the torso to the thighs. Inhale again, halfway lift, Ardha Tanasana, keeping the gaze at a steady place. Exhale, soften, Uttanasana. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Bend your knees, sink your hips. On the next inhale, extend your arms forward. And again, keep your gaze at a place where your neck feels in line with the spine. Take your arms out to the side. Feel the inner shoulder blades hugging towards the spine and the shoulder blade itself, the scapula, pressing onto your back. Even here, we have the invitation to draw the shoulders away from the ears, to press down into the feet, to feel light. Take your hands back behind you, rotate the palms up. Without dropping your shoulders any closer to the floor, lift your hands a little higher, millimeter by millimeter, and a little closer. As you feel resistance in the shoulders, touch that resistance with your breath very lightly, noticing how the sensation builds a little bit on the inhale and dissolves a bit with every exhale. Slowly lower the fingers down to the floor under your shoulders. Inhale once more, arms forward. Exhale, press the hands down, stand tall. Inhale, reach the arms up, look up. Exhale, gather your hands to your heart. Establish the base of Tadasana Mountain Pose. Close your eyes even here. And again, tap into this idea of levity. Pressing down into the floor and lifting up through the crown of your head. Where does gravity support you? Drawing your physical body to connect with the source of power beneath you. Dropping the shoulders, dropping the collarbones, dropping you into the four corners of your feet. Then by pressing down into that foundation, you draw energy back up into the frame to get longer and lighter. Let your eyes open. Take that principle with you into even more challenging poses today. Inhale, reach up. 
Exhale, soften your knees, roll over your thighs. Halfway lift on the next inhale, keeping your gaze at a place where your neck is in line with the spine. Fold, exhale. On the next inhale, step one foot back at a time into your version of plank pose. As you exhale, guide the entire front body to the earth. Uncurl the toes, inhale, Bhujangasana, elbows in and down. Exhale to release. Hook the toes. Inhale, press the earth away from you, back up. And exhale, downward facing dog. With your next inhale, float your right heel towards the sky slowly. We do this slowly so that we notice if we're tempted to lift the right hip higher than the left. If that happens, just gently draw the right hip back down, pointing the right toes to face the earth, and noticing again your connection to the mat, where you feel your physical body pressing down into the floor, advocate some strength from those points, and feel that energy draw up your limbs, carrying you closer to the sky. On your next exhale, move your right knee to the center of your chest slowly, inviting the knee into the chest as you come forward. Keep lifting up away from the floor, pressing down to lift up. Take the right leg back up towards the sky as you inhale. And then step your right foot between your hands, exhale. You can lower the left knee down to the ground. Place your hands on your hips, draw your hips all the way back. Squeeze the legs in, draw the tail under. And release the hands out in front of your chest. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. Inhale, float your arms overhead. Exhale, again, drop the shoulders. With the next inhale, lean out over your right leg, steady your gaze. Exhale, press into your feet and float your back knee. Bring your awareness to your hips and your shoulders. The right hip crease needs to pull back. Back leg stays active. Inhale, take the torso upright. Exhale, soften with the collarbones, soften with the shoulder crease. One more cycle of breath here. And as you exhale, return your hands all the way down. Take the right leg as quietly as possible to the sky. Exhale the right knee towards your chest. Inhale, step into your high plank or a one-legged plank. And our first chaturanga coming halfway down or less. Elbows close to your ribs, shoulder peaks stay open. Cobra or upward facing dog as you inhale, pressing down to lift up. Rather than feeling oppressed by gravity and sinking in, use the earth, press down to lift. Soften the elbows, flip the feet, and take your hips back. Take a few cycles of breath here. Keep your gaze on your right foot. Slowly drift your left heel towards the sky. Keep even pressure in your hands and keep evenness to your hips. With your next exhale, draw your left knee towards the center of your chest, pressing into your hands to lift your chest away from the floor. Inhale, left leg back up. Exhale, step your left foot between your hands. Ease your right knee to the ground. Hands to your hips, hips pull back. Any necessary adjustments to the pelvis, a little pelvic tilt. Hands move out in front of your shoulders. Loop the shoulders. Inhale to float the arms. Exhale, drop the shoulders down. Inhale to lean forward over that left leg. Keep the gaze steady. Exhale, fire up both legs. See if you can hover over your left thigh. Slowly drift the torso upright. And as you exhale, soften the heart into center. Soften the shoulders away from your ears. One more inhale here. And exhale, bring both hands down. Inhale, quietly take the left leg up. Exhale, left knee to the center of your chest. Inhale, plank or one-legged plank. Chaturanga Dandasana, elbows close to your ribs. Inhale, cobra or up dog, moving away from the floor. 
Downward facing dog, exhale. Take a few cycles of breath here. Just warming our body as we start to think about how we move with a sense of lightness in our practice. Using the support of the earth beneath us, and the support of the energy within us by tapping into this moment where it exists. Lift your heels, look to your hands, step or lightly hop between them. Halfway up, inhale. Fold as you exhale. Soften your knees and reverse roll the spine up to standing. Let your head come up last. Curling up. Rolling the shoulders back and down. Move your feet close together at the front of your mat. Bend your knees, touch the floor with the tips of your fingers. And inhale, extend the upper body. Coming into the seat of Utkatasana. Again, with a lot of awareness in our spine and creating beautiful angles in our body that allow energy to flow freely, letting the shoulders drop. We tend to feel heavy when we tighten or tense unnecessarily. We tend to feel open and ease when we're soft. So letting those shoulders stay soft. Bring the fingertips towards the floor now. Lift your hips towards the sky. Halfway lift, inhale. Take your left foot and step it back, exhale. Pivot your left heel to the floor. Find your strap. If you like to use a block in some of your lunges and things like triangle pose or side angle, you can place the block next to your foot. If you know that you don't need a block, there's no need for that. Take the strap carefully up and back in warrior two. Now we don't need too much length to our strap. Letting out about halfway is probably more than enough. Take it in the back left hand and then just let yourself sink into this frame of warrior two. Do a little mindful check-in, rolling the knee open, pressing your feet into the floor and lifting up to the crown of your head. Noticing perhaps where we get a little bit too eager in our pose and waste energy. That eagerness may come in the form of taking an unnecessary backbend. So we're hugging the floating ribs back in, dropping the shoulders down, and focusing on length in the spine. Now bring your right elbow to rest on your right leg. With that pressure down into your knee, hug it open even more. Float your left hand towards the sky. Try and stack your left wrist over your left shoulder, your left shoulder above your right shoulder. Now we're very aware of gravity here. It's pressing us down towards the earth. To create that sense of lightness and space at the back of the shoulders, we need to press into our right elbow to lift up towards that top hand. Now we should feel more spacious between the shoulder blades. You can stay here if you want a little bit more. Bend your left elbow and take the hand behind you, hanging the strap behind your back. You can stay here, rolling the left shoulder back. Or if you want more, the right hand can reach under to grab hold of that strap. If you're holding your strap, be aware of the shape of your chest. If your heart is turning down, you're not quite ready yet. Have patience with your practice. Work on stacking the shoulders at whatever level you need to be at. Left shoulder back, right shoulder under, hugging the floating ribs in. Now again, this pose can feel overwhelming when we're just moving down with gravity. So let gravity help you where it needs to, then connect with your feet and lift up into your frame. Feel the lightness sourced from the earth, the length and the space in your spine. Slow, steady, even breathing. From here, we're gonna try and work the hands a little closer together. Holding that strap, take your gaze down, lift your back heel, hop the left foot forward once, maybe twice. See if you can get the fingers even closer together on your strap. Stay here if you want a little bit more. Press down into your left foot to slowly travel up. As you travel up, the right knee comes with you. Gaze is down, breath is steady. Sink the right hip, 
Soften the shoulders and the jaw. Think about the dynamic energy moving down through your left leg, rooting into your left heel, rooting you into this frame, this moment, and tapping you directly into that vibrant life pulse that can then extend out through your right leg. Like you're hitting the rewind button, bend your right knee, slowly lower the right foot, lift your left heel, loosen the strap a bit, step back, pivot the left heel, roll the chest open. Again, find the lightness in the pose, release the right hand, elbow to your knee, left hand to the sky. Back to warrior two. Carefully with your strap, left hand forward, drop the strap, lift your back heel, right leg to the sky, inhale. As you exhale, bend your right knee, take your heel towards your tailbone, lift your right hip in this variation. Now point your right big toe and try and tap your left shoulder blade. Keep reaching and yearning. Now you can stay here or you can open up to wild thing by dropping the right foot behind you, taking the right hand to the sky and over your head again, pressing down to lift and open. Slowly return the right hand back to the floor. The right leg travels back up to the sky behind you. The right foot steps between the hands and the left foot follows. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale again, lift and lengthen the spine. Now as you exhale, step your right foot back and pivot the right heel to the ground. Find your strap with your right hand. Very carefully, take that strap in the right hand behind you. Sinking into the frame of warrior two, hugging your left knee open, pressing down to lift up, to lift and lengthen. Let the strap go so it's hanging about halfway. And rest your left elbow just above your left knee. Take the right hand up towards the sky like you're doing bent triangle. Right hand above the right shoulder, right shoulder above the left. And then you're spreading the shoulder blades rather than dumping down into that left shoulder. You're springing back up towards the sky. Thinking about all the amazing things that grow in our world and life, like trees and flowers and plants that move up away from that strong oppressive force that is gravity, that can push us down or anchor us down. They use that to give them deep roots then they use their roots to rebound up towards the sky. So we're doing the same. Stay here if you want more, bend your elbow, bring the hand behind your back, hanging the strap. Conscious of what your right shoulder is doing and working it back to stack above the left. Stay there or reach under to grab hold of the strap. If you are holding your strap again, rather than collapsing down, find the ability to lift and lengthen. Drawing the floating ribs in, your gaze can be at the floor, in the direction of your heart or up towards the sky. And then taking the gaze towards your left foot, lift your back heel, step once or twice to get to the front of your mat. Bend your knees more deeply so you can wiggle your hands a bit closer together. Then think about pressing into your strong roots to slowly curl and stand up, just like a flower or a tree reaching for the sun, standing tall. Feel the shoulders dropping. Feel the left hip sinking. Stay here or extend that left leg. Steady gaze, steady breath. Like you hit the rewind button, bend the left knee, slowly lower the left foot to the floor, 
Lift your right heel, step the right foot back, pivot the right heel down, turn your heart to the right, hips forward, shoulders back, lifting up rather than dropping down. Then releasing the strap with the left hand, slide the elbow up above the left knee and return to bent triangle. From here, come back up to the frame of warrior two. Spiral the hands carefully down, releasing the strap, lift your back heel and take the left leg quietly back and up towards the sky. Begin to bend your left knee, pulling your heel towards your tailbone. Let your left hip lift. Now start to reach that left foot for your right shoulder blade. Stay there or let the left foot fall back behind you, coming into wild thing, pressing down into your feet to lift your chest towards the sky, your belly up and your left hand over. Return the left hand back to the floor, left leg travels back up towards the sky. Now step your left foot between your hands, right foot follows, inhale halfway lift, exhale to fold. From here soft knees, slowly roll the spine up to standing, letting your head come up last, looping your shoulders up back and down. With the next inhale, take your hands out in front of the chest, palms down. Draw the shoulders back, plugging them in. And then slowly float up onto the tips of your toes, or at least the balls of your feet. And let everything about your shoulders go soft. Use just enough muscular effort to elevate the arms. Squeezing the legs slightly in, pressing the toes down. Feel that sense of lift. Now bend your knees over your toes. As you move your physical body towards the earth with gravity, feel the same amount of energy cultivating a sense of lift and lengthening in the spine. So you feel as light as a feather. Just floating down on the breeze to settle on the ground. Eventually bring your sit bones to rest on your heels. Take your arms over your head, drop the shoulders down. Move your hands forward and all the way down to the earth. Lean forward, pressing into your toes, heels stay lifted. Come into a forward fold, keeping your chest close to your thighs, heels lifted and squeezing in. Slowly sink your heels down. With the next inhale, halfway up. Step the left foot back as you exhale. Lower the left knee down to the ground. Walk the hands back. Draw the right leg back with you. Plug the right leg back into the pelvis. Lift and lengthen and again be mindful of your neck. As you exhale, move with gravity down into that increased sensation in the right leg. Do that one more time, inhale and exhale. With your next inhale, walk your hands back a bit, straighten the arms, lift up, get nice and long. As you exhale, bend your right knee, roll to the four corners of your right foot. Again, if you like to practice with a block, this is a good time to find it and bring it close to your mat. Lift your left knee up away from the floor and pivot the left heel down towards the floor. On the next inhale, left hand goes forward, up and around, and we return to warrior two. Bring your left hand to your left hip. Roll the left hip back. Take the right hand, reach it forward, and bring the right fingertips either to the floor or to your block. Gaze is down at your right foot. Draw the left leg in and lift the left leg up coming into the base of half moon. Here we again explore our ability to feel light, pressing into the four corners of your right foot. Right shoulder rolls under the left, stacking the shoulders, stacking the collarbones, and attempting to stack the hips as the left toes turn out to the side. 
Now the right hand can be touching the earth, but you're not really generating support there. This is a standing balance pose, not an arm balance. And we get that sense of lift by coming away from the floor. So every once in a while, the right hand may actually leave the earth. Now you can keep that left hand on your hip, or you can take the left hand up towards the sky, turning the palm in the same direction as your heart. Playing again with the idea of coming away from the floor with your right hand by pressing into your right foot to lift up. Maybe even the idea of bringing the right hand into your heart. Bring the right and left hand down now. Lift the left foot towards the sky. Turn your hips to bow your chest over your right leg for standing split. Bend your right knee, lower the left toes to the floor behind you. Again, anchor the left knee down and revisit that pose that we started in. Now a little more heat in the right leg. So as you inhale, lengthen. And as you exhale, use that heat and gravity to sink in. One more cycle of breath. Walk the hands closer, press into your fingertips, lift the right leg, thread it through without a sound. Take the hands to flat palms and take the right leg to the sky. Step your right foot between your hands, let your left foot follow. Halfway lift, inhale. Step your right leg back, exhale. Lower your right knee down to the ground Walk your hands back and draw your left toes back. Notice the sensation on this leg before we do that half moon work. Perhaps notice the tight hamstring, any restriction in the hip. Inhale to lengthen your spine. Exhale, soften as much as you can to move down. Two more times with your own breath. Inhale, explore lift and lightness. Exhale, move with gravity. Now inhale, come halfway up. Bend your left knee, walk the hands forward. Take your right knee away from the floor. Pivot the right heel down and come back to the base of warrior two. Right hand behind you, left hand in front. This time we'll take the right hand onto the right hip, bend that left knee deeply, reach the left fingers forward, and take the left hand down, gazing down. Moving into the base of half moon on this side, draw your right leg into your body. You can use the block or no block. Fingers will be underneath the shoulder regardless. And you start to open the right side of your body up towards the sky, stacking the right shoulder and right hip above the left shoulder and left hip, turning your heart and your navel to the right side of the room. Pressing back into your right foot and down into your left foot, feeling lighter and lighter in your left hand by pressing down into your left foot. Keep the hand on the hip or take the right hand towards the sky, turning the palm in the same direction as your heart and play again with coming away from the floor with the left fingers. You can keep the hand down or bring the left hand into heart center. Slowly return the left hand down and the right hand. Turn your chest to face your left leg. Square the hips and the shoulders as you bow and humble the chest to the left knee for standing split. Let the right foot fall to the mat behind you. Lower the right knee and again return to that half Hanumanasana pose. Noticing now again that heat in the left leg. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, move with gravity. Last cycle of breath, inhale and exhale. 
Now walk the hands closer to your base. Slowly pull that left leg back to your pelvis, lift the left leg up and thread it through, setting your hands down to flat palms. Take the left leg up towards the sky on the inhale. Step the left foot between the hands, exhale, right foot follows. Halfway up, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Here you can grab opposite elbows and even allow yourself to sway from side to side coming into waterfall pose. Truly feeling gravity's embrace in the upper body. Lower your hands to the floor. Take your time to step back and drop your knees coming into tabletop pose. From tabletop, we'll drop down to our elbows and our forearms. Noticing that your elbows can move into a position where they're under your shoulders and your forearms can run parallel to one another and parallel to the long sides of your mat. Rolling your palms flat to the floor, inhale, take the crown of your head and your tailbone towards the sky. As you exhale, round the upper back a little bit by anchoring into your elbows, pressing down to get great lift. Do that one more time, inhale and exhale. From here, we'll gently interweave the fingers. As you interweave the fingers, notice your elbows. Sometimes they'll have a tendency to really slide out. You may need to walk them back in. We're gonna play with the idea now of using the foundation of the arms to press into the earth to create lift, rather than moving just with gravity to anchor down. So we need to have a healthy balance of both using gravity to touch us to the floor, to create those strong roots, then using that connection point as a foundation from which to build and lift. Thinking about building up to a base for headstand, so for some of us, we're gonna stay here, pressing into the elbows to animate the flesh of the upper back, to notice when our muscles perhaps fatigue and we begin to collapse in our frame. That means it's time to rest in pose of a child. For others, if we want a little bit more, we'll take the crown of the head down and rest the back of the head towards the interlaced hands. And again, press into the elbows to animate the flesh of the shoulders, pressing down to lift the shoulders up. Stay there if you want a little bit more, lift your knees and walk your toes in. And now really activate that energy of lifting into your hips so the hips aren't sinking you're lifting with your sit bones like they're magnetically being drawn towards the sky. You're pressing into your elbows, keeping the shoulders firm. Gazing here towards your toes, keeping the gaze still, the breath steady. You can stay here or for those who have headstand practice and you feel called to it, you can move to a wall or do this in the center of the room. You're gonna bring yourself up towards either one leg or both. Steady breathing, pressing down to lift up. The leg should be actively lifting. Stay in your pose for about five to 10 cycles of breath. When you're ready, with the legs active, the hips lifting, begin to lower your legs slowly. Keep lifting with your hips. Keep pressing down to lift up. Slowly lower the toes all the way down. Walk your feet back and find pose of a child with the palms rotating up. Slowly curl the spine up to hero's pose. Loop your shoulders. 
Bring your hands to the floor. Take your hips to the very middle of your mat, crossing the ankles, and unravel the feet out in front of you. With that imprint sensation still fresh on our crown chakra, that ultimate flowering of consciousness towards the ceiling, that ultimate source of levity or lightness, we're going to bring ourselves down onto our back and prepare for Shavasana. Take the hands out in front of you, and with lightness and ease, curl yourself down. When you arrive on your back, take your arms out to the side. Let the elbows bend. Bring your knees in towards the chest. You can hop the hips to the right and drop your knees to the left. Allowing gravity to do all that is necessary in this pose. Feeling gravity hold you against the earth like a gentle blanket. Take your gaze towards the right. Keep the right shoulder pressing down into the floor and feel your breath. Now keep the shoulders pressing firmly into the mat as you bring your knees back up to center. Hop your hips over to the left and drop your knees slowly to the right. Take your gaze towards the left side the mat, anchoring that left shoulder down. And again, pressing into your shoulders, bring yourself back to center. Allow the soles of your feet to rest together and let your knees fall open. Again, gravity does all the necessary work. And your effort is simply the effort of surrender. You can close your eyes here and feel the front of your body open, back of the body resting against the earth. Extend your left leg out and bring your right hand down beside your hip, palm turned up. Extend your right leg out and bring your left hand down to the outside of the left hip, palm up. And allow your physical body to settle in Shavasana. Feeling the support of the earth beneath your back and acknowledging all of the support it created for you today all of the points of connection. And allow yourself to rest within that support. Start to move your fingers and your toes. Draw your knees again into your chest, making yourself small like a seed. Cross one ankle over the other and rock yourself forward and back until you're able to come up to a seated pose. When you arrive again, deeply connect with those sit bones. Pressing down into your sit bones to sit tall, to allow gravity to embrace the shoulders and the collarbones and draw them down effortlessly to the floor. Feel the rise and fall of your breath. And gather your hands into your heart. 
When we do this, we become very aware, very present, very intentional. When we drop our mind fully into the moment, we have the ability to tap into that vibrant life force that exists within us. Only in the present moment can we utilize that vibrant life force and allow it to animate this body, to give us the strength that we need to stand tall, to yearn towards the sky with lightness and ease. Keep that with you for the rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow on your mat. Namaste.